Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the host or the gatekeeper of this program, known here on social media and around the earth. I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. Angel Snup Nup 7, I am your soul brother number one, and your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I don't wish to take up a lot of your time because I know that there are many things that you could be doing uh, within this time period, but I would hope that you would give me uh, just a small portion so that I may explain today's subject matter. Today's topic is one that I have always been asked. I have made a video in the uh, past on this same subject, but that video uh, is, is not very good. And I would like to just update my thoughts and feelings on this particular subject and the topic, the subject that I've chosen for today, actually it's a two-parter, it's two questions, and one of these questions is, what are you doing for black people? <laughs> what am I doing for black people? And the next uh, commonly asked inquiry is, my solution to the problems of the so-called Negro or uh, the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin. And I think the latter, the second part, would take a little bit more uh, time to answer uh, properly uh, so there is less, uh, there is less What's the word I'm looking for? There's less of a chance for clarification. So with that said, uh, I would like to thank you for listening and giving me some of your uh, most precious time. So the first question is, what are you doing? Yeah, you, yeah. What are you doing for black people? Since you got all this to say, since you, since, since you know so much, everybody is wrong. What you doing for black people? Well, <clears throat> let me say this. What am I supposed to be doing for black people? I am not responsible for black people. So I can choose to attempt to try to do something for black people or I can choose not to do anything for black people. That's my choice. I don't owe black people nothing. I am not responsible for black people. Black people are responsible for themselves. And you cannot help nobody unless they want to help themselves. So you can find a drunk on the street and you can offer assistance and you can offer suggestion that they should stop drinking and be better. But of course they will they will reject that because they have found enjoyment in drunk. They have found peace and love and solace in being drunk. So they must the first step must be they want to help themselves. Any assistance 
any suggestion, any advice that I bring really means nothing until the person that you want to assist or want to help, they decide, I'm sick of this condition. I can do better. I'm ready to go beyond. I am not responsible for them. You understand? I'm not responsible for these people. You are responsible for yourself, just like I am responsible for myself. And we all suffer the consequences of the choices that we make. And some choose death over life. I am not here to uh, persuade anybody from doing what they feel is best for them. There are many who choose death. I would suggest maybe perhaps there's a better way. But you don't have to listen to me. Do what you feel that is good for you. As long as you're not harming or bothering anyone else, I could care less. If you're drunk in the street, we just simply step over you. That's what we have been doing. Of course, it is the humane thing to do when you see one who is in bad shape. It is the civilized, it is the humane thing to want to help a person. But if they don't want to help themselves, what can you do? It even says in religious texts that God will give you no help until you help yourself. So you must take a step and this God will take two steps with you or for you. My problem with that type of ideology is that if I'm doing all this stepping, what I need your help for, if I'm able and capable of doing all this, I don't need your help at all. So what are, you know, what is, what is, what is, you got all this power, you should be able to lift me up and cause me to step. Then I can go on my own like a person when you're, when you're training them on a bike. You help them on the bike, you hold them and you steady them until they can get their balance and they are able to go on their own. You don't see that in this, this God thing. You have to do it yourself. So what is your purpose if you're not helping me get on the bike, cause me to get balanced, and pushing me off till I'm able to do for myself? I have to actually walk myself before I can get any help from you. So now I don't, if I can ride the bike without your help, here you come putting your hand on the bike like you. I can do this myself. What, 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 what's the purpose of you helping me now? I've done this on my own. What are you doing for black people? What am I supposed to do for black people? I am not your leader. You have not accepted me as your leader. If I was your leader and you are supporting me, then you have the right and you can say, what are you doing for the people? Because I'm the leader. That's my job. I'm supposed to be doing something for the people. I am responsible and have decided to voluntarily become responsible for the people. Now, in my case, I will be able to tell you what I am or have done for the people. And if I have not done a good job, if I have not produced beneficial results, then I am the kind of leader that will quickly sit down and shut up and search for the next competent person that can get the job done where I failed. And I would not be ashamed to say, look, I tried, but it's just not working. But y'all follow leaders. And you follow these celebrity guys who talk good. They do nothing for you. They lead you to nowhere. You're going nowhere. You've never been nowhere. And you don't even ask them, what are you doing? They just give you a pretty speech. Give me, show me something of substance that you have done for black people. You are the leader. You want to lead somebody. They can show you nothing of substance. Because if your leaders, 
if these people who want to be your leaders that you have that you follow around, if they did anything of substance, then the people could easily see the benefit. And they would want to be part of success. Nobody wants to be part of failure. People want to be part of success. But you have nothing at all to show your success, your competence. It is more symbol rather than substance. So you don't have a great majority, vast majority of black folks rallying around nobody. They find that it is just better to, to continue to just live my life, be a slave or whatever you want to call me. I'm just going to live my life and then be done with it because y'all niggas don't have nothing going on except symbol without substance. A whole bunch of talk, fantasy, feel good stuff. And feeling good does not fill your stomach. Your stomach has to have something real to digest. Your stomach cannot digest a pretty speech. Your stomach cannot digest high scholarship. It's not interesting. And I'm not interested. But if you chose me as your leader, if you expect me to do something for black people, then I will show you what I have accomplished or I will sit my black ass down with no problem because I have proven to be incompetent. And it is better for me to sit down than continue to be a detriment to the community. It's just as simple as that. Popularity does not mean nothing. High scholarship means nothing. You asking me about what am I doing for black people? What are you doing for black people? And is it working? No, it's not. And you question me about what I'm doing because you know what you're doing is not working. And you want to try to put me on front street. And just like right now today, I'm going to present to you what should be done. And you really don't really want to hear it. You want to continue to take your square pig and put it in a round hole hoping that one day it might work. Will it work yesterday? No, it, it didn't even work yesterday. It looked like it worked yesterday, but it really didn't because square pegs don't go into round holes. Will it work for Marcus Garvey? It worked for the Egyptians. It worked for so-and-so. Are you a follower of Marcus Garvey? And clearly it didn't work for Mark, Marcus Garvey because everything that was of Marcus Garvey, the UNIA, does not exist no more. How many times do you have to rebuild the nation of Islam? The stuff is not working, people. You have the nerve to ask me, what am I doing for black people? But you continue to... Uh, be loyal and support these things that clearly do not work. You need something new. Not to say that we're not influenced by what happened in the past and those things of old, but you have to be creative. You have to liberate your mind because there's many ways that you can do things and you continue to do things in the ways that just not working. And that's what we don't want to accept. That these things are not working. It's not working for you as an individual. And clearly it's not working for us as a people because the masses reject it. Don't want nothing to do with it. Don't care. You know why? Because it failed. And then they give up and this stuff ain't working. And they go on to try to do something else. So, what am I doing for black people? The only thing that I can do for you is offer you real advice, real suggestion. And if you would one day say, look, 
I'm tired of the bull crap. Let's give this guy who is the host of the reality's temple on earth, since he talk all this crap, let us try what he's talking about. Let us see if it can work, if it's the real deal, since he's so real. Now you put me on front street. Either I put up or I shut up. I have no problem with none of it. I will put up if it don't work, and I'm gonna we're gonna find out very quickly. I'm not gonna waste two, ten, twenty, thirty years to see. It don't take a long time to find out if something is working or not working. I'll be happy to sit down. I'm always willing to help those of whom I see have something that could be or that that's that's um, made in a way where it could be something that could cause us to be a successful people. That's all that it takes to get the ball rolling. A little success. Then a little bit more and a little bit more. And the people will rally begin to rally around you because you're a winner. But nobody's going to continue even though you look like a winner. Some of y'all look like you're winners. But again, it's more simple than substance because when it's all said and done, you're not a winner. One sign that you are a winner is when the government begins to take actions on you. When there are actions taken upon you to, to try to stop you, to try to destroy your success. But right now, the enemy has nothing to destroy. You created nothing to destroy. It's more symbol than substance. Now, in my conclusion, and I'm going to spend the rest of this time, I don't know how long it's going to take, but uh, y'all bear with me, please. I want to try to get through this. I just want to make certain points. <clears throat> what is the solution? For the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin. At one time, it was organizations like the Nation of Islam that offered the solutions to the so called Negro in America. And actually, they were on the right path until they became corrupted. Mm. when we begin to view ourselves as more than what we actually are. When we become materialistic, we get caught up in the praise and the celebrity and the money and the fame and the wealth. We start getting caught up in those things. And then when we first started our mission, we were sincere. And we really wanted to make an attempt to change the reality of the lives of these of whom are oppressed. But then we begin to get praise. And we begin to get a little power and, and influential. And the money starts rolling in. And we, we live in a life that we never dreamed we would be able to live. And then something that was started. Perhaps the real intent was to liberate and free a people. Now it's nothing but a money making machine for certain individuals. You should be able to recognize those who are trying to enrich themselves and those who sincerely their heart, you can tell that their heart the only thing they want to do is assist us in liberating ourselves from a vicious predator. But you seem as though you cannot, you cannot understand, you can't distinguish between those who love you and those who exploit you because both of them will smile in your face.
So the question that I have been asked is what is your solution to the problems of these who are descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin? And again, there are those who ask me this and you are not sincere wanting to know what is the solution, my solution to the problem. The only thing you want to know or hear is just enough so you can say, that, 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 that ain't going to work. That, 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 no, nah, no, nah, that, that, that ain't going to work. How do you know it's not going to work and you have not tried it? How do you know if that tastes salty and you have not tried it? How do you know that's sweet if you not if you have not tasted it? It makes no what you your your whole mentality you don't make sense and you're not sincere. But what clearly is a reality is that what you love and what you have become obsessed with, we know that is not working. And I know that it's not working. I know what I need to do for myself. As an individual, I knew that I had to unlearn everything that I was taught. And I have decided a long time ago, I'm not going to bring babies into hell. Why would I bring babies into hell when I'm living in hell? And I don't like it. I didn't want to be here. I'm not going to be so selfish. And then you bring babies into hell. Knowing this is, this is hell. But you don't want to make heaven for your babies. Because the devil will kill you. Because the devil will take your. Will uh, fire you from your job. The devil will make things hard for you. You don't want to deal with the devil in hell. But yet instead you're going to bring another human being and act like you're doing them a favor. Well, I gave you life. Gave them a life of hell. You didn't do the, you don't do these children no special favors. Your parents didn't do you a, no, no special favors. We're being born and put place in hell. And all these adults around us. Not doing nothing. To bring heaven into our life. If you was a real man and a real woman. It would be better. To go extinct. Than live like this. How are you living. And your life is in hell. What kind of life do you do we have? You have to worry about racist murdering. You have to worry about your own kind murdering you. People around the world making mockery of you. You hate it for no reason. Locked up most times, a lot of times for no reason, simply because of your dark skin and all this hell that we go through. And you bring babies into this. Look at my baby. I'm not happy when I see your child. I might smile a little bit. I'm not happy about that. Look what you done done to this child. Brought them into hell. Why am I supposed to be happy about what you done done to this poor baby? What is my solution to the uh, problems of the so-called Negro in America? You really don't care. You're going to keep doing what you doing and just complaining when you know what you're doing is not working it's not bringing no kind of benefit it's not changing nothing and the first thing the reason why it's not changing because you don't want to change you were brought to this country to be a slave or we were born in this country conquered by these people to be a slave and that's all that you know and actually you're satisfied and you're comfortable 
being a slave, being a nigger. Matter of fact, a lot of y'all call yourself nigger with pride. What's up, nigger? You call yourself a dog with pride. That's all that you are. The first step is you must want to change yourself. Because if you change yourself, your environment has no choice but to change because you're not the same person no more. You have to unlearn everything that you think that you that you knew. Not only that which made us a European, a dark-skinned person, having a European mind, everything that the racist told us, we have to unlearn it, re-examine it. But everything so-called pro-black, Afrocentric, those things must be re-examined. You must unlearn everything and start from scratch because clearly it is not working. All this stuff in your brain is like a pipe with a clog in it. The water can't come through like it's supposed to because you got something that's clogging up the pipe. That's why you're not creative. That's why you don't know how to deal with an enemy. Because your enemy is not as powerful as you think. Everything on this planet has strengths and it has weaknesses. The only thing you have to do is exploit your enemy's weakness. You don't have to be stronger. In martial arts, there you are taught in a manner, no matter how strong your opponent is, you can take advantage of your opponent's strength, although you are physically weaker, smaller than your opponent. And the same can be done with racists, but your fear, your inability to think, because your mind not liberated yet, your head is clogged up. That's why you don't understand many of the things that I say and present to us. You can't comprehend it because your mind is clogged up. So the reality is still on earth represents 1000% liberation of the mind. You have to unclog your mind brain. You have to clear out the cobweb. You have to start all off new. You have to put some Drano down in there so that it can get that clog out your mind. But y'all infatuated with all this fantasy and fictional stuff that we have been taught and indoctrinated with going back to the past. This is not the past. This is the present. And you have a future that you are responsible for. So if that future is bad, you caused it. We caused it. If that future is good, we caused that too. What kind of future will a, will a brain that's clogged up, what type of future will that brain produce? We're living in a future right now. Look what it has produced. Are you happy? No. Do you complain? Yes. Are you satisfied? No. But the thinking of the past produced where we are right now. They were unable to change their condition because they got stuck on stupid, unable to be creative in their mind because their mind wasn't liberated, clogging their minds up with a whole bunch of nonsense, inappropriate knowledge that did nothing to change a condition. So now they live in hell. And so right now we live in hell. And you can't tell me to go to hell because I was born in it. If you want to do me a favor, tell me how to go to heaven. I know about hell. We know about hell. The so-called Negro the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin. We've known hell and have only known hell going on 500 years. Show me. The Quran says that and teaches that Allah wants to put us on the right path. Certainly not to hell, but on the right path to heaven. But you haven't made it there yet. 
How many of y'all can quote the Quran back and forth? The Bible back and forth? Talk about the hereafter and heaven and all. Why haven't you made it there yet? You should ask yourself the question. Clearly, you are not on the right path. You must gain appropriate knowledge in the appropriate time. This is the appropriate time, but now you just need appropriate knowledge and your Quran and Jesus and Muhammad and the Israelites and your body flying through your the, into the skies and the, all that stuff must not be appropriate knowledge so that it can it's the proper key to open the door to the heaven that you and I we deserve. What is the solution? I'm telling you the solution. The first step is to liberate your mind. You must liberate your mind and open your brain to different thoughts. You must open up your brain and allow it to work. That's what your brain is for. Any problem that arises, your brain can solve it for you unless you have shut it down. And many of you have shut your brain down because you believe in this and you believe in that. And since you know already, the brain says, there's no, there's no other, there's no reason for me to think anymore. Because you know everything already. So since you know everything already, why should I think? And that's your problem, black man and woman. You can't think. Unable to think. So since you cannot think, you cannot comprehend what common sense is. You can't comprehend what logic is. You can't comprehend what critical thinking is. You can't comprehend what reason is. You can't analyze nothing because you know everything already. You just shut your brain down. So this is the world. This is the environment that you created. We as a people and we as individuals. And you complain. You created this. And you handed the same type of thinking to your babies. So even as a child, you shut the child's brain down before the baby can even learn how to think good. You shut the child's brain down. So you have a community of zombies and robots. A community of people that will just go wherever the wind blows will follow whatever smells good. Everything that smells good ain't good for you. There are some plants that offer things that smell good to insects. Fluids that taste good to insects. And when the insects are attracted to the smell, attracted to the sweet and perfumey fluid, they get trapped. And they die. And they become a meal for that which produced the smell and the fluid. And this is where you find yourself because you're unable to discern real from that which is delusional or an illusion. That which is a facade. What is my solution? My solution, the first step is you have to think for yourself. You have to unlearn. All the things that you think that you knew. If you don't do that, you don't have a chance in hell to get out of hell. That's just the bottom line. There are those who offer these solutions and that y'all follow. <clears throat> they, uh, all these people, they want you to follow them. Come follow me. So and so, come follow me. I got, I got the solution. Come follow me. I got the solution. Let me give you a quick example. The nation of, of Islam always say, the way out of hell is to follow the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Cool. If Elijah Muhammad has the way to get out of hell, man, I want to get out. So, in 1995, you had a brother. 
popular brother, influential brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in 1995. This man was able to call close to 2 million black men to Washington, D.C. So, not, not only that, but this brother had the ears, not only of the 2 million men, but the ears of the whole black community of the United States of America. All eyes was on the two the million man march. Now, come follow Elijah Muhammad. So now you got all these people listening, supporting under one leader, which this is a good thing. Because one of the problems that we have is too many black folks, people of soul. Y'all know I don't like that word black. I'm more than a skin color. We are the essence of life. And that's all soul is. We don't act like it. We've been made. Uh, deaf, dumb, and blind. Mentally dead. But. You had this brother. And we need to be under one umbrella. And he brought under one umbrella. The various ideologies of the soul community, agnostic, atheist, black Muslim, Hebrew Israelite, Christians, whatever you, whatever you find yourself in, this one leader, he had their ears. Now, what happened? The problem is, you want all these brothers and sisters, you want the black man, you want, you want the black people to follow you, and then when you get them, you don't know, really don't know what to do with them. Because leadership is nothing but pretty speeches. And leadership is more than pretty speeches, it's a plan, it's vision, it's, it's plan on what you're going to do. To accomplish this, what you're going to do to accomplish that, what needed to be done, you did not need to atone for anything. Because we have been made insane. When you are insane, you are not responsible for your actions. However, if we were in our right state of mind, yes, we need to atone because we know we knew better. But we didn't know better. We were slaves. We didn't know no better. We're just now learning what civilization, what being civilized is. So we did not need a two-hour speech about atoning for anything. We need a two-hour speech on how we are going to be independent from those who made us deaf, dumb, and blind. What is the proper action? But he didn't know. So the only thing black men and the nation got from the nation of Islam was the history of Philadelphia, I mean the history of Washington, D.C., and we should atone for our sins. How does, how does that help us? It's true. It has some benefits. Many things have benefits, but overall, it did nothing for the masses of the people who was waiting and was glad and thought for sure we on our way. We had to be on our way. Two million men going to Washington, D.C. We This is it. This was the break we was looking for. Louis Farrakhan did not Louis Farrakhan did not know what to do with these men and women. And you so pompous and you so high and mighty and so arrogant, 
You can't admit that you don't know what to do. Didn't know what to do. Outside of religious teaching. If, if the only thing you want to do is build a church. Okay. You can do that. Clearly we see. You know how to do that. But the people are not a church. So the nation of Islam failed. That's just the bottom line. And too arrogant to listen to anybody else. So you think you're going to be successful? No. You'll get a few benefits, but you're not going nowhere. Because you don't have the appropriate knowledge. You're not using appropriate knowledge. Although this is the appropriate time. The only thing you were able to do is offer a symbol without substance. You offered no vision. And you say yourself that without vision, the people perish. What is your solution to the problems of the so-called Negro in America? Well, you know, we could overthrow the government. Oh, you know, so you, oh, don't even bring that up. Again, you will lose and haven't even tried. Well, we already know we can't overthrow it. You don't know what you can do. You haven't tried it. Matter of fact, you don't even think about it. You are loser and a coward and you're incompetent. There are many, there are many ways that a government can be overthrown. Use your brain. Think about it. You're unable to do it. So since you're unable to think, of course you lost. If you can't think, you can't play chess. Because chess and checkers are a thinking man's game. If you can't think, if you can't strategize, you can't play chess or checkers. The only way we have any kind of a chance is that we must become unified. And you hear all the debates, but you never hear a debate about Brother, I disagree with you. Brother, I know you don't like me. But brother, sister, we all we got. How are we going to create unity? That's what the debate should be about. Not about can we decipher the Mekdunetta? Is the black woman the problem in the black community and all this other nonsense? That we uh, have become obsessed with nothing but distraction tactics, so that because really the bottom line is you don't know. Just like if a person, when you throw them out into water and they don't know how to swim, they just splashing around. That's all that these people in the black community is doing, just splashing around. But if you have an idea of how to swim, you might be able to save your life. Somebody throw you out. And instead of panicking, okay, I, I saw them do this, okay, and you get to, you might mess around and learn how to swim immediately. You don't know. But this type of strategy, you just don't know. And nothing will work. I don't care who you are. I don't care how good you can speak and talk. How charismatic you think you are. How funny you think that you are. Whatever it is. It might work for your little organization, you as an individual, but it will not work for these who are the descendants of slaves born in America who have been living in hell, having dark skin, going on 500 years. It will not work for them, and it is good that they don't support you. You, don't, you have not earned support. It is clear you don't have the answer to the problem. So unity, the liberation of your mind. Unlearn all the things that you think that you know. Unity. I don't care how pissed off or who you don't like. When you see another dark-skinned face like yourself, 
I, I don't like you, but man, I, I got to work with you. That's the attitude that you have to have. You stole, you stole five cents out my wallet last week, but man, we got to unite. I can't be tripping on that five cent that you stole from me last night. You jumped me in line at the hot dog stand. Y'all were tripping on petty stuff. You tripping on petty things when you're living with racists who are shooting you down in the street, killing and murdering you every day. And the discrimination that we have faced ever since being made slaves almost 500 years ago, going through the same crap. Whatever you do, you must think about separation. There's nothing wrong with separation. There are people who were married. When they became separated and divorced, they became better friends. Unless, of course, you know, divorce caused people to hate each other over children and property. But if they don't chip off custody of children and property, a lot of times it makes people more friendly. They, they like each other because now they're separated. We must separate from those of whom cause us to be in this condition to begin with. We must separate from them. Because as long as you are integrated, dealing with them, your mind cannot be fully liberated and you cannot come into your who you really are and grow into your full potential because you're too worried about, I don't want to offend them. they my friend. I don't want to offend them. And you have to take their feelings into consideration. You separate from them. You don't have to worry about their dang feelings anymore. And it's good that some of us don't care about their feelings anyway. But for those of us you know, we all humans, we all want to love, to, we need to separate. And don't worry about all the black folks. Worry about the group who are on time, acting in the appropriate manner on time. Be the leader that you are. Don't worry about the leader, a specific person. You and I all of us whose minds are liberated and open, all of us are leaders. Find other leaders. A brain cannot bring a solution to this problem. We need brains. My brain cannot offer a solution. I can't do this by I can't do it by myself, no matter how hard I try, because I just cannot do it. It's impossible. I can only do what I am doing right now, that is to cause the awakening of your mind so that you can find your place in the struggle. We're not looking for praise. You're not looking for celebrity. You're looking for to change the condition of a people who deserve heaven after living in hell for more than 400 years. You deserve heaven. And there are forces that don't want you to be happy. They like to see us suffer. They like us to have nothing. They like us on the bottom. And we should not be satisfied with being on the bottom. Because actually, we should be on the top. And that's why they don't like you. That's why they hate us. Because that's just our nature. That's just how we are. We float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. You know, we always like cream. You know, we always rise to the top. That's just how we are. That's how we roll. But there are those who are just jealous of us because that's just how we are. We try to be good at whatever it is. Driving a car, we try to be good at driving a car. Boxing, uh, tennis, whatever it is that we get off into. Being a drunk, I'm going to be the best drunk I can be. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay? I'm going to be a hoe. I'm going to be the best hoe I can be. That's just our nature. We just lively like that. That's just how we roll. Unfortunately, we do things that's a detriment to us the same way, but that's just how we, that's just how we roll. 
and it has gotten us in trouble because we because when they decided or made you a slave because <laughs> when they decided to make you a slave I'm going to be the best I can be <laughs> oh man that's why another one of the reasons why it's so dang difficult to get out of this situation oh man 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 <clears throat> you must understand that a solution to the problems of the so-called Negro in America must include all the people of soul. Not just the nation of Islam, not just the Hebrew Israelites, not just the Kemites, not just those in the Christian church. It must include all the descendants of slaves born in America. Everybody must be included. Everybody must find their place in the struggle. Do that include the gay folks? Yes. That include the gay folks. That it, do that include the brothers and sisters that married to white folks? Yes. It includes all. It includes all. You want to make this specific, try to make this specific nation or country, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And actually, you're no better than the racist or anybody else on this planet. We are different. That's just the bottom line. And we have to learn and understand how to, how to learn how to live with people that's different from ourselves. I like apple pie. You may not like apple pie. So, I'm going to separate myself from you because I don't like them people that like apple pie. That's so silly and so dumb. It's not realistic. And you wonder why you stay in the condition that you're in. Even if you made a nation just the people who believe the way you do, you're still going to be different. Everybody is different. Your mother is different from mine, chances are. We don't even come from the same mother. We don't have the same father. Did not grow up in the same state. We have to learn how to deal with people who are different. It must include all of us. <clears throat> you must learn how to use your voting power. If you, if your mind drives you or points you or directs you to Using the vote, economics, and school, all these things, I have no problem with them. Al alone, they cannot work. Voting can help you. Voting can help us if we vote as a people. But as individuals, there's no power in it. And we see this. It's, this, it's a done deal. That's for sure. Economics. If your economics, if your schools, whatever that you do, the voting, if the ultimate goal is not separation, you might as well just shut up and be and get and just stay happy where you are right now. These things without if you're not thinking about separation, then you might as well, we might as well just shut up. And that's just the bottom line. The reality of it, the best solution is separation. But you cannot separate. And have this mentality that you have right now. Because separation will only cause civil war. That's all it will be. So you will get you will go and find your own little piece of land. And because y'all can't get together on your differences. And you still feel with self-hate. You're still a nigga. The only thing will happen is there will be a civil war. And your little country probably wouldn't even survive uh, two weeks. Because <clears throat> you still have a nigger mind. A slave mentality. Whatever you do in this country, voting, your economics, your schools, whatever that you do right now, until you get to the point where, okay, we, we have this land, we can start really building for ourselves. You must create a military for yourself. 
You must, a military does not always mean a group of people with guns and bombs and things of that nature. But what about military, uh, an army of lawyers? So when your leaders, when the government start coming after you, after us, because when you really start doing something, the government going to find, going to start investigating and start and find things to charge you with and lie and set you up on different things. You know how the government, you know what your government would do. Then you need an army of lawyers. And then you have these suckers that outright want to physically harm you. So you need a military. You need a black CIA, a black FBI that can investigate and deal with these enemies. So when one of us is shot dead in the street, it would be taken very, very serious by the government and anybody else. They will quickly apologize. We're going to invest. We're going to investigate this. Just like that young sister uh, that was pulled over, regardless to if her actions was inappropriate, when something like that happens, the government itself will get involved because what you have, what you actually will be having is an international incident. And if you have an international incident, that means that the government has some kind of respect for you. And you're not going to get respect by begging and pleading and all this, these things that we voting and no, you're going to gain respect because you and I earned it. And when you earn that respect, believe me, they're going to give it because they know you, you don't give me respect. I got something for you, for your ass. That's just the bottom line. I suggest that we form an American style government because we're used to that anyway. Where we have one person that will speak for all of us who is under a 12 seat council perhaps that represent all of our major organizations and then we have like a house of representative like that 12 seat council will be something like the senate and then we have like the house of representative that will represent some of our smaller organizations and groups and this president has no power, no more power than what the 12 councils seek and the House of Representatives give him or her. But basically, this president is nothing but a spokesperson. So you can assassinate the president. It means nothing because all he or she will be is nothing but a spokesperson because the real uh, decision makers and the real power comes from the people themselves represented by the 12 seat council and their representatives. And we must also make it very clear and it is important that everybody receives justice and you be fair to all. Be fair, be fair and just to all whether they are gay whether they married to a Caucasian woman or a Chinese person or somebody outside of the race, it makes no difference. We be fair. We're not going to be like those we complain about. I'm not going to hate you because you're different from what I am or think differently. But we will put those issues on the table. You need to, we need to be able to work things out in a manner so that you don't cause harm to others because we are different. As we continue as a visionary in the future, we really want to avoid fossil fuels. We don't want to deal with oil. You want to concentrate on natural energy sources.
digging up the earth for all these things that actually are poisoning you. All these metals and liquids that are actually poisoning you. Poisoning life. We need to form a way and begin to move in a direction where we're more close to nature. We're not interested in religion. We're not interested in people's personal beliefs. You don't found a new nation on some God. There's too many people got too many beliefs in gods and stuff. You just want to keep things direct so it does not cause harm or disrespect nobody. If you want to be a black Muslim, that's all, that's good for you. If you want to be a Hebrew Israelite or a Christian, whatever the thinking process is, y'all can keep those things because at this time, because at this time, they are just part of us. They, but again, if you do the smart thing, we need to begin to unlearn the things that we thought that we knew. And when we begin to do that, that's why I don't care anything about the, the people being different. Because once that brain begins to open up, and once you begin living a life of truly being free, your brain is free, your physical body is free, all these different things, I already know it's all going to change anyway. You can't stay the same because you will begin to see that the things that was that you thought was beneficial to you offered by belief, reality, you can live that reality every day. You don't have to believe in it no more. So if you have facts, if you live in reality, that, that you once believed in, what do you need that belief for anymore? I'm here. I don't need to believe in it anymore. I'm living it. I'm living reality. There are, there is so much probably that I've missed. I'm just giving you the skeleton of the solution to your problem. But you cannot try it and I know that you don't want to try because many of you are not even interested. You're not really interested in black people like that. The majority of these people are looking for slaves. I want some Hebrew Israelite slaves. I want some black Muslim slaves. I want some whatever. I want somebody to be a slave. I want to be a slave master and I need some slaves. That's, that's really the mentality. They're not looking for, they're not looking out and want you really to be a free, self-thinking, functioning person. They just want to change slave master. Well, we're no longer the, we're no longer the slaves of Caucasian people. Now, Masa got a black face. That's much better. I don't see nothing better about that. Somebody was telling me that well you know African slavery is, was better uh, than European European uh, slavery because European Arab slavery was so uh, they, they used fear to keep the slaves under control. They used terrorism to keep their slaves in check. It was a tool that they used so they wouldn't have a lot of problems out of the people that they enslaved. It still works right now to this day. Fear. But African slavery is better. Well, whether you are shot with one bullet or you are shot with a hundred bullets, the end result is you're dead. So, Arab and European slavery is a hundred bullets and African slavery is one bullet. Slavery is not good, period. 
It is no good at all. It is something that should be rejected. There is no good to it. It is no better to it. Who are you to enslave anybody? Then they, these same people run around talking about how hard they worked and they act, they so, uh, what's that word? So self-righteous and holy and whatever. You're a slave owner. What's holy about you? What's so hard working about you? You got you have other people doing your labor for you. Ain't nothing hard working. You work hard at being a slave owner. That's the only thing you are hard working at. Uh, a liar. You you hard working at being a liar, a deceiver, a murderer, and a rapist. And the list can go on and on. That's the only thing that you are hard working at. I don't see your hard work in anything else. You have other people and you exploit other people to do your, your labor and the real work. So I am not impressed by the United States of America. A nation that was built on somebody else's work. Then you have the nerve to be angry at the people of whom you got free labor out of for over 300 years. Over 100 years of underpaid labor and nothing but terrorism of these people going on 500 years. I am not impressed by the United Snakes of America. And many of you must really love America because instead of unifying with your brother and sister, because you don't like Angel Snub Nub 7, I don't have to like you. You don't have to like me. But I have more of a hatred for this condition than I have for you. And both of us say or make a claim we hate this condition. So we sh our hate together should be enough that we see that, look, it's a benefit to unite and actually learn how to love a person that hate both of us hate this condition. But see, you're comfortable. Your slave master, you are in a position where your slave master, you have a nice car and a house and you get three meals a, a day. Some of y'all weigh 300, 400 pounds because you eat good and, you know, you just talk all that. I, I don't like the white man. You just, y'all just a bunch of talk. And then you really don't understand what nation building really is. Because nation building requires not only land, we need to send our people out as ambassadors so other nations can get to know us outside of what these devils, these crackers show them. We need to go to Africa, we need to go to China, we need to go to other parts of Asia or India or whatever. Let people know, meet people, let them know who we are really and what we are about. And we're looking to go outside of these European slave owners. So we need ambassadors. The same way they sent out these people to spread the word of Jesus, you need people to go out and support our brothers and sisters. They, they go out and let them go among uh, nations so that we can find a place that we can build our own. And you have to understand what nation building really is. You're not going to have Facebook. You're not going to have the internet. You're not going to have, you may not have running water. All these different things you have to build from scratch. So the first pioneers in building the nation, you will be like Daniel Boone. You have to you have to build the sewer system. You have to build the houses. You have to build the plumbing. Everything you have to do with your own hands. There is no already built nation for you. But, be but before you can even talk about building a nation and being independent. You need to start small. Take over your neighborhoods. Create neighborhoods that will represent the nation that you want to build. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you can't create a neighborhood, 
You can't create a town. You can't create a city or create a state that will, that will represent the nation that you want to bring into existence. Then you don't have a chance in hell. You cannot, you cannot build a nation and you cannot even create a neighborhood, a town. It makes no sense. We have to get up out of La La Land. We have to get up out of these delusions and fairy tales. So what if I went to China and the people of China said, look, uh, my brother of soul, here is, is enough land large enough to be the state of, uh, let's, let's choose a, like Hartford, Connecticut, the state of Connecticut. We're going to give you land like the, that, that's, that's large enough, it would be like the state of Connecticut or Rhode Island or something like that. You can have that. China will support you for the next 20 some years. You can get on your feet. But you have to be loyal to us. You got to remember, we help make, make you a nation. You know there's going to be you know, we're going to have to work some things out. But you have the land, you have water, there's resources and certain things there, but you got to go get it yourself. There's nothing there except some trees, wild animals and whatever. You got to go in there and develop it yourself. So here's the, you talk about you want to build a nation, here's the land. How many of you have the skills? How many of you are ready to go and build your nation. No, you want you live in La La Land. You want to go somewhere. You got Facebook, the internet, clean running water coming your house, and all. that's not reality. That's not reality. But there are those who are willing and can do it. Those who wish to stay in America. Send your money and you support those who are trying to create your own nation somewhere else. And you will have dual citizenship. And what they create will be something that so-called African Americans created all by themselves. We run the show. Nobody else. With, with China's help, with Russia's help, whoever wanted to help us, they got. They understand. They don't have nothing to do with our nation. So support the pioneers. Support the ambassadors that will go out and do these things for us. And then we must uh, give skills to our children: plumbing and and architecture and engineering and all these different things. There's plenty of work for everybody to do. You can believe that. But again, without liberation of the mind, but again, without unity, of which I know many of you are not really interested, is just talk. Without these things, you don't have a chance in hell to leave hell. And that's just the truth of the matter. What I'm saying does not change your religion. I'm not trying to convert you to anything. This is looking at nation building in a real point of view. Something that all of us can be involved in because all of us deserve heaven after being in hell. And I refuse to leave one hell to go to another one just because it's black. With that said, jot down your comments. Uh, I love speaking with us. There's not too much more that I can say. We can elaborate or go more into detail on what I just presented. But uh, basically, this is the skeleton work of what must be done, the solution that what must be done in order for us to change our condition it is the real solution to the problems of these who are descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin. Until next time, 
like Doc Cornelius always would say, as important, I wish you love, peace, and soul.